Hey everybody, Andrew Fantasia here, and welcome to this quick little update video on the Marvel United Kickstarter for the Multiverse Season 3. Uh, this is just a quick little update. Uh, we are following this campaign here on Digital Charcuterie very closely because this guy is a Marvel United fanatic. So obviously I wanted to share my excitement with all of you and invite you along to come join me as I salivate over this game step by step by step. So a few small updates and one very big update have taken place since our first video. So for video two, let's go over those together right now. The first big one is the box art. Yes, we have gotten the official look at our box art for Marvel United Multiverse for the core box. I'm kind of a weirdo when it comes to these things. If you talk to any board gamer, any like serious, hardcore, sweaty board gamer, they will tell you that their least favorite thing about Marvel United is how much space it takes up and how many boxes there are and how they wish there was a storage solution. And you know what? For the most part, those people are right. I live in a tiny apartment. Space is at a premium. I should not be having boxes the way I have boxes. But the thing is, I love the box art on all of these Marvel United games and expansions so much that I can't bring myself to throw those boxes away. I keep everything as it came. All the original packaging is there because I just love those boxes so much. And hey, if I keep them, it's less cardboard and plastic that goes to waste. So there you go. I'm doing the earth a favor in the long run. So when this box art got announced, of course, I was drooling over it for hours. I love the way this looks. I think it's just another example of the beautiful chibi style art that this game has given us, and they have really stepped up their game. Season one looked beautiful, but now they're, you know, full stride. And of course, it gives us a look at all of our characters. All 10 of our characters have now been revealed. All the ones we didn't know before are here now. The first one would be the one that Andrea Carvesio had already pretty much confirmed, which is Loki. I was a dumb dumb back in the first video when we were going through the trailer together. I thought that miniature they showed us was Lady Loki or Sylvie or something. Turns out it was just Loki. Loki's got long hair. It, they're they're chibi. They're blurry. It's easy for me to mistake it, but that's that's Loki. And he's going to be a hero in the game, even though he's a sneaky little guy. He's going to be a hero. We're going to get a blue Loki mini. But then the box art gives us a look at our final two characters that we still were up in the air about. And one of those characters has me very happy. That's right. Look right there. That's Maestro. That is the Hulk villain Maestro. And that means not only do we finally have a Hulk villain on the board, but we get to check off another character on my personal wish list. If you missed out on video one, there's going to be a link in the description below. Watch that video. I go over my whole wish list for Marvel United uh, and what I want to see. And it's basically just all characters that we need to fill out our roster. Maestro is on that list. So let's go ahead right now together and check that off. Ooh, that's satisfying. We got ourselves a Maestro. So, so far for keeping up, that's three characters from the wish list checked off. We're off to a slow start. There's still plenty more of this campaign to come. Next, finally, we've got our big sort of uh, display villain on the box here, the, the most prominent one, and that is Doctor Doom in a white cape rather than a green cape. I don't know anything about this Doctor Doom. I don't know what this is all about. Quick little bit of research told me that this is a Secret Wars version of Doctor Doom after he stole his power from the Beyonder. Okay, neat. We've got a, a variant Doctor Doom. Now, that's one of my biggest concerns when it comes to this multiverse theme that they're going for is because uh, I'm very apprehensive about the fact that this is going to be just a whole lot of alternate skins for characters, right? Here's a blue Loki. Here's a white Doctor Doom. And I don't think that's as exciting as characters we've never gotten at all, like Ironheart and Maestro and Mighty Thor. That's what makes me excited. That's what makes, I'm sure, a lot of other Marvel United fans excited. You you know, you only have so much room for so many miniatures and so many cards. Don't waste it on, here's a fifth Cyclops from a story that happened once in 1978 when we still need all the Eternals and all the Inhumans and they're nowhere to be found. You know what I mean? So just, I really hope Simon doesn't go crazy with the variants and with the alternate skins in this game. I'm, I'm putting my trust in you, Simon. Don't let me down. Fill out that roster. Next, we got another Who's That Pokemon tease on the social media page for Simon, and they showed us the final sculpt for Ironheart. 
this is a character who I've said before has me very excited because she's a new character to add to the roster. She's not just a reskin or an alternate. It's Ironheart. She's her own person. And this is a beautiful mini. Simon is known for making beautiful minis. That's why they're called Cool Mini or Not. These mini reveals, though, have been interesting because I've noticed a pattern with these three. It looks like in the multiverse set, we're getting really detailed, large bases. If you compare this to minis from sets your you know, the bases are just very basic, short, flat, thin bases with all the uh, accoutrements kind of going to the character themselves. Here is not the case. I mean, look at this. You've got Cosmic Ghost Rider standing on this giant, almost pride rock type boulder thing that's jutting out. You've got Mighty Thor on this massive plinth covered in Norse runes. And now you've got Ironheart's base. Like, look at the amount of care that's going into just the bases. I, I'm curious if all of the multiverse set is going to be like this because that means the miniatures are going to be bigger slightly, but it just looks like that's something that Simon is doing. What do you think of these bases? Do you think that they're going to go all out with all the characters? But in the meantime, it's so exciting that we have this box art. And what's even more exciting, our biggest story of the day, the Kickstarter campaign has a release date. Yes! And that release date is, drumroll please, January 18th, 2024. No, I'm just kidding. Is this January 18th, 2023. Very exciting stuff. So exciting they got Loki himself to announce it, which kind of makes me suspicious because he's usually lying and tricking people. So is this some kind of double cross on Simon's part? What's going on? Nope, there's our answer. January 18th, the Kickstarter, as of the time of this recording, the Kickstarter will be up in nine days. So in nine days, we're going to know so much more about this game. We're going to start that ball rolling. We're going to be getting all the juicy expansions and stretch goals trickling out one by one, which to me is one of the most exciting parts of being part of these Kickstarter campaigns. And we are going to be covering it right here together and going over all the juicy goodness that they put out. Unless, you know, they go bananas with the variants, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't want to fund this. So here's hoping they fill out more of this roster. They give us what we love, more of it, more variety, more villains is a very, very big one. Don't forget, if you're interested in this game, check out their Kickstarter, which starts January 18th. And come on over here to Digital Charcuterie, where we will be covering it step by beautiful, marvelous step. Until next time, my friends, we'll see you again in the Master Plan.